वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स व्हिच इज बेस्ड ऑन कॉम्बिनेशनल सर्किट्स नाउ लेट अस डिफाइन कॉम्बिनेशनल सर्किट्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर सो वी डिफाइन कॉम्बिनेशनल लॉजिक सर्किट्स एज दोस टाइप ऑफ सर्किट्स व्हिच आर इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय यूजिंग बूलियन सर्किट्स नाउ बूलियन सर्किट्स मे इंक्लूड एनी टाइप ऑफ अ लॉजिक गेट व्हिच मे बी एन एंड गेट व्हिच मे बी एन और गेट नॉट गेट or maybe universal gates as well <clears throat> and then uh, where the output is a pure function of present inputs only so this is the important point here that as far as the combination circuits are concerned whatever we are getting at the output let this black box be any type of a combination circuit if we talk about first of all examples uh, the combination circuit can be an adder it can be a subtractor it can be a multiplexer also it can be a demultiplexer all these topics we are going to study one by one in the upcoming classes uh, similarly it can be a decoder it can be an encoder and so on so all these circuits are the examples of combinational logic circuits so what we are referring into this box is any of these circuits that we have mentioned over here Uh, so uh, the relation is that if suppose we are having n number of inputs so n number of inputs may have m number of outputs so we'll be defining the relation also how is n and m related uh, first of all we will make this definition clear uh, first point we understood that combinational logic circuits are made of logic gates which may be and gate or gate or not gate and other logic gates as well and then the second point is output is a pure function of present inputs only it means whenever we are giving some input let us suppose we are having uh, three inputs a b c and we are having some two outputs as uh, sum and carry in case of adder let us suppose so if we are giving our input as 1 1 so the sum will be 0 carry will be 1 if you don't know how it comes then you have to wait for the upcoming classes uh, now according to the concept of the combinational logic circuits if suppose next time you are giving input uh, 1 1 1 you will be getting different output now after 1 1 1 if you are again giving the previous input which was 1 1 0 again you will be getting 0 1 so the point is whenever you are giving certain kind of input let us suppose you are giving 1 1 0 the output will be always same it will not change and whatever output comes in the combinational logic circuit it is only and only dependent on the present inputs now to make things more clear you have to actually compare it with the concept of sequential circuits the concept in sequential circuits is that there is a concept of memory over there okay as it is mentioned here the combinational circuits uh, do, do not use any kind of memory this point we have to understand that right? what is the concept of the memory if we take one example if we take one example of a, a remote control that we use for our televisions all right uh, so you know that if suppose uh, your input you are uh, suppose watching channel number 205 any random channel number we have written now after this what happens uh, we are having this concept we are having plus and minus button in our remote all right so whenever this plus button will be pressed what is the next channel that we will be able to watch because the previous input was 205 so obviously the next channel will be 206 and the next example we can also think of let us suppose the channel we are watching is 190 and again this particular button is being pressed so what is the output right now the output right now is going to be uh 191 so let us pause and see what is the behavior we have to note down that we are using constantly the same button which is the plus so this is where the input is given right but what we have observed in the previous case by pressing the same button the channel that came was 206 and in the second case the the same button being pressed but the output is 191 right this is a typical case of sequential circuits 
and why this is happening? It is because uh, the output that is coming in our uh, you can say sequential circuits, it depends on the present inputs and it also depends on the previous input being applied. But that is the story of sequential circuits. Uh, so, what, uh, what is the point that is important to remember over here is that if suppose we talk about the sequential circuit, they have a concept of memory over here. This channel uh, plus minus that we are using, it is having a concept of memory. So, depending upon what was the previous value stored, the next input is coming out, right. But if we talk about the combinational circuits, now it will be more clear how uh, this definition is uh, applicable over here. Uh, you see here the inputs are same, right, 110, but the output in both the cases were also same, right. But what happened in, com in the sequential circuit here? Although the input this plus button was you know uh, applied twice, but it produced us the different outputs. So, that uh, makes the definition of a combinational circuit clear to us that first of all uh, the important point was it is based on the concept of uh, logic gates and second point the output is dependent only and only on the present inputs. So, that also explains us uh, this concept that uh, uh, there is no concept of memory as far as the uh, combinational circuits are concerned. Then the second thing uh, that we have we also have to understand over here is if suppose we are having any type of a combinational circuit like I told you the example it can be an adder, it can be a subtractor and so on. So, any circuit it can have. Then the question is how many number of inputs this particular combinational circuit have and how many number of outputs does it have and how is n and m related. Let us take all three cases n can be greater than m, n can be less than m or n can be equal to m. Let us see which condition is true. If we take an example of adder which is suppose a full adder or which may be a full subtractor. So, we will see shortly in the upcoming videos, uh, they are based on three inputs A, B and carry in and there are two outputs which is sum and carry. So, it is, it is a general uh, logic like if suppose if, if we have to add two numbers in a digital form in a binary form. So, we need at least two bits A and B and there is a possibility of carry also sometimes like 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 2, 0 with carry 1. So, now we have three inputs here, right. So, with three inputs and two outputs which is sum and carry, sum is what we are writing here and carry is what is uh, carried forward to the next stage. So, n greater than m is also possible and example can be full adder or full subtractor. Now, is it possible to have n less than m, do we have any such case also? And the answer is yes, we are having uh, some logic circuits, some combinational logic circuits where n less than m condition is also true. Let us take the example. Now, an example of n less than m case would be a demultiplexer or it can be also a decoder. Demultiplexer is a circuit where we are having one input and around uh, it depends on the uh, select line we can have multiple output lines. So, so, it can be 1 cross 4 also it can be 1 cross 16 also depending upon the select line. So, this is an, this is an example of uh, demultiplexer and decoder uh, we can have 3 is to 8 decoder we can have 2 is to 4 decoder. So, you can see the, this side is representing input. So, input is 1 but outputs are 4 or 16, inputs is 3, but output is 8. If input is 2, outputs are 4, means n is less than m, number of inputs are lesser than number of outputs. So, it is example we can have demultiplexer and decoder. Now, the question is what about n equal to m, is this also possible? The answer is again yes. Let us take an example. The example is uh, suppose we are we have to design a circuit which converts binary code into a gray code or we are converting gray code into a uh, XS3 code or vice versa. So, in all these examples we need to take equal number of bits. So, if we are if we are uh, suppose dealing with 4 bits 
of binary code then obviously gray code will be also 4 bits right if this is of 8 bits gray code then xs3 code will also be of same number of bits so n and m are having same kind of relation so before uh, winding up uh, this first class uh, what we have understood in this particular class is first of all a definition combinational logic circuits uh, they are made of a simple logic gates by interconnecting them uh, in a certain way second thing we have understood is that uh, the output that we are having in the combinational logic circuit it simply depends on what is the input you are giving it does not depend on the previous input you had applied it does not depend on that simply because there is no concept of memory in this this is the third point there is no concept of memory and the last point we understood that the uh, number of inputs and the number of in, uh, outputs that we have in the combination logic circuit they do not have any relationship means n and m can have any value it can be less equal to or greater also it depends on which kind of combinational circuit are we dealing with and as we will go on with the different types of uh, combinational logic circuits in the upcoming classes you will be more and more clear about uh, how all these uh, definition uh, concepts we have covered today are applicable uh, to this particular understanding of combinational logic circuits so if you are having any questions do ask in the comment section i'll see you in the next class Take care and have a nice day.